Have it your way. <laughs> Welcome, <to> Daddy X. <laughs> the the new BK song, like the 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 artist who sings it, mm-hmm. like I don't know why I don't like that voice, but there's something about it. Like he's there's something in like the inflection. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's. <laughs> He's like, BK, have it your <laughs> way. It's like, mm, I don't, I don't think I like that. <laughs> you don't like the newfangled kids music. Dang old kids. Mm. Uh, dang old, old kid. Mm, don't like all good music. Mm. But um, no, I was trying to hum our actual theme song. Oh. <laughs> this one right here. That's my cue to put it to music. <laughs> Wait, we started the episode? Welcome to episode 38 of Dot .exe, a saving content podcast. Finally back is me, Eric Acosta, and saving content's own, Ed Acosta. We're back. A dinosaur story. We're back. From out of space. Uh... BK. <laughs> Have it your way. <laughs> Have it our way because we're back. We're back. <laughs> so we've been away. Well, a few a few days. Well, you know, just a little bit. Yeah, life gets in the way and <sighs> we we got overstuffed on Vianetta ice cream. Yes. You know I still haven't had any Vianetta. Well, you know what? We've got what, 12 more episodes and then we can celebrate our Vianetta 50th? <laughs> should we do Vianetta or should we do something like something more uh, Filipino? I mean, if you want to... <laughs> holo, holo. If you... I'd have to make the holo, holo. I don't have anywhere around here to get holo. Well, you know what? No. No, around me, there is a, uh, a Jollibee's. I was going to say, you have a better chance than I do. Uh, a jolly, <laughs> but the jolly bee is like I don't know, forty minutes away. So just to go get hollow, hollow, I don't think so. I'd have to. I'd, I'd want to make it myself. Yeah, uh, I think I'd probably have to end up making it myself anyway. Too. I don't think it's anywhere. I think I'd have to go to the same jolly bees <laughs> you'd have. <laughs> Actually, a five hour trip to jolly yeah. bee. <laughs> just for fried it. chicken, hollow, hollow, and. <laughs> Spaghetti with sugar in it. Yeah, it wouldn't be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, no. I was gonna make the joke that we would get a thing of Vianetta, and then you said, "Oh, you make it Filipino." Yeah, we're we'll put sweet potato on top of it. <laughs> we'll put ube, <laughs> ube on it. <laughs> Here's our Vianetta ube style. Ube and a duck egg. You can keep the duck egg because <laughs> that duck egg's gonna end up being balut, isn't it? For me, yes. Hundred <laughs> uh, percent. You can eat that throw up. That's fine. <laughs> well, Ed, since uh I've got a I guess you could say a throw up amount of uh games on my list. Let's start with ha. yours. Ha 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 ha. Um a, a more uh a digestible amount. A digestible. I haven't you know, honestly, since the last time we were here. Uh, I haven't been playing much except, <laughs> except for like <laughs> one game and then like, uh, you know, uh, a handful here and there uh, for like review. Uh, the, the most recent one I reviewed here was Chef Life, the restaurant simulator. And it's a it it is a simulator game. So you are simulating running a restaurant there's the managerial aspect and there's the whole actual cooking aspect so So, i got a question about that yes is that more in lines with line like with like chef life uh being like restaurant simulator more like the books like manager like you know um football manager or is it more like okay so is it more like you're actually doing you're being the chef but you also have the uh the book's part yeah so it's not so much on the book's part 
except for basically refilling your pantries and maybe designing the kitchen and such. I mean, okay. I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the front house, the front, the front end of house. the house. Um, so it's more like the Madden's, Madden's version of um, franchise mode uh, before they did the manager mode. Mm, you know, well, for the time being, just so you can kind of get an idea, uh, till I actually start explaining a little bit, we'll say <laughs> yes. So there, there are two phases in Chef Life. There's the prep stage where you do all your managerial tasks. And if you wanted to do any prep work for your, um, your, your upcoming shift and then the actual shift itself. Now, in the lead up to opening for the day, you can do things like purchase new uh, decoration for the front of the house. Uh, you can rearrange tables. You can rearrange the chairs and you, you can basically decorate how you want it to look mm. uh, along with that. You can go in there and you can set up your menu for the day. And your menu is based off of the recipes that you have unlocked so far. Uh, to unlock recipes, you have to actually do them. And you'll do them by completing uh, <laughs> a day with one of the recipes or doing like a practice or something. So during that whole beginning phase, other than all of that, you will also need to stock your pantry. So you'll have to make an order based off the menu that you create for the day to, we'll say the grocery store. It's, it's like a market, but you just order it and this lady will come Delivers in. it. Yeah. Lady okay. will come in with her stuff and she'll just dump it in your free uh, fridges. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go, son. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you say dump it and that's what I imagine. I imagine the old lady, old dinosaur lady from Dinosaurs <laughs> coming in with a push card of crap and just dumping it into your freezer. Oh, yeah. This lady's not definitely not an old lady. Maybe a lady wearing a too tight of a shirt, but not an old lady. <laughs> well, OK. All right. That's a very different type of person. I mean, it's a very that. different type of lady, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she comes in and uh, she'll put what you've ordered into the. Uh, the fridge. Now, when you go to make those orders, you can order from different grocery stores or different markets and the quality of the ingredients will either be better or worse depending on where you're getting it from. But, you know, the costs will also fluctuate depending on where you're getting it from, too. So if you want better ingredients, obviously you're going to pay better people for them. Papa John's. Right. Papa John's. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, it's a balancing act. And the more of the good ingredients that you add to your dish, the better the dish will rate. And eventually, you know, the goal is to get like Michelin stars. Is so, good ingredients, uh, maybe I missed but when you said this, is good ingredients like just better rated ingredients? Like, do you have like a level, like you can get, you know, economy eggs or high quality eggs, or is it just the type of food you buy? No, you're you're pretty spot on. So like if you were to go like when you start the game out, um, it has like just kind of one set of uh, grocers that you can purchase from and you go from like, you know, this is basic and the next one's up like this one's a little better egg. <laughs> it's like, you know, you go from like a B level a free egg. range. Yeah, I, I, they have like flavor text and everything, but oh. it's like going from like a B a grade B to a B plus. Gotcha. When you but, get further into the game, you can unlock better places you can order from. And those will end up being like, oh, this is like an A plus ingredient. But you're also paying like three times the amount. Right. Like you're getting Wagyu steaks or Wagyu, however you want to say it. Yeah. Gotcha. So you order all those and they go fill your fridges. Now what you have to do is... I should also mention this is all in third person. Oh, um, huh. you know what? Hold on now, now, now that I think about it, it might be the the beginning stage might be in first person. Yeah, I was going to say that seems kind of weird to be third person. 
Unless you're like actually in the market. No, you know what? No, it, it, it's for. Uh, I'm drawing a blank because um, there is like dialogue and conversations that you can have with your sous chef and like uh, uh, any assistance that you hire and everything. So, I uh, for some reason I was thinking that it was a uh, third person that you're following the cameras behind them, but no, it it's all first person. And because the um, the actual cooking takes place first person style, and you know, I'll let me hold off on that because it's a whole it's it's its own <laughs> thing. It's its own it's its own entity. Yeah. So you will grab the items out of the fridge, and you will have to go and stock your pantry. And your pantry has uh, divisions, so like your meats, your fish, your veggies. And then like uh, miscellaneous type stuff. So like oils and things like that. So you go fill all that up. And now you're ready to actually, if you want, which you should, prepare items that you can do beforehand. So let's say you get in there and you want to uh, make. So one of the dishes is like just like a, a fried fish. My, uh, it might be salmon. I'm I'm drawing a blank on what type of fish, but it's fish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you wanted, you could just go ahead, fast forward the clock, start the day, and your menu, let's say you pick the fried fish dish. You could go ahead and just go. And you'd have to go grab a fish out of the um, the pantry, put it onto a cutting board, fillet the thing, take that fillet, Bring it over. Now, this is all you actually walking it over. Bring it over to your cooking station where you will now uh, hit it with flour. And then you'll put some oil in the pan. You put the fish in the pan and you'll fry it. So you can go about all of that. Or if you want to speed up the process because this all takes time and you only have a certain amount of time. Uh, that your restaurant is open to customers and you don't want to have people wait too long because they will get angry at you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, who knew? And if they get angry, the rating of your dish falls. And obviously you want to be higher rating so that you can get, you know, better stars and yada, yada, yada. So it's in the, the rating is per dish, not so like each dish is its own rating. And at the end of the day, Depending on how well you did on all the dishes okay, all that you the, served, okay, it's I accumulation. See. Gotcha. So you could do all that at you know at that time, or you could save yourself some time by going ahead, cutting the fish during the prep time, breading the fish during the prep time, and then sticking that fish in the fridge. Ah. So then, when it comes time to actually make the dish, first customer comes in, they want fried fish with you know, whatever veggie or something. Uh, you just pull the, you know, the breaded fish out of the fridge. And, and now you it. just go ahead and you go, you go do it. So you've saved yourself some time. Now, do uh, you, when you do the prep, you can only prep as much as you purchase, correct? Yes. Okay. So um, I'm, I don't remember if there's like a difficulty slider, but I do know when you go for the, the, the difficulty I was playing under, it's going to order the amount that you need for that day. Oh, okay. So it'll already have, it, it knows how many customers is going to be yeah. coming in. Okay. So you, you could end up with some leftover, but you shouldn't end up running out unless you mess up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I didn't mess up in waste food. So, mm. <laughs> all right. Toot your own horn there a little bit, I guess. Mr. Uh, Chef. Again, you know, it's, it, it, I forget the difficulty. It was probably super easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's how so I play there, all my games. So there are some, uh, like, what, what, uh, I forget the word I used in my review, but um, you can turn on some assists where you can have it so that there's, no patience, or I'm sorry, that there, there is patience. <laughs> oh, okay, that like infinite patience, or yeah. So it take you know you can casually just make the dish and not have to worry about 
the customer getting angry that it took too long. They're actually rating you on the quality of the dish, not how fast it got how, to them. Not the service, just the food. <laughs> just the food. And, you know, starting out, that's perfect. Because right. the actual cooking part is very, very, uh, like, cooking mama and all those uh cooking like almost arcade kind of simulator type games i was gonna ask is it like cooking mama or is it like played up or is it like um uh cook serve delicious uh it is definitely cooking mama cooking mama ask so like it's not played up in any way uh it is not as like um, make sure button. you're hitting all the right buttons. Right. Button on, combo. Uh, cook, serve, delicious. It is definitely cookie mama in that. Okay. You want to cut an onion? Well, move your joystick in this direction. Chuck, chuck, chuck. <laughs> but it's, it's not food truck simulator though, right? <laughs> uh, kind but, of. But so is it that goofy simulator, like VR simulator esque style, or is it more in an arcadey simulator? No, well, I'd say in tone. We'll go in tone. It's very much like a food truck simulator. Oh, okay. Okay. But all the commands and everything reminded me more of like a cooking mama. <laughs> gotcha. So like if you were cutting the onion, like I was mentioning before, uh, if you're using a mouse, you just use do the mouse directions. Or if you're using like your controller, you just follow the joystick prompts on screen so it'll be like okay just hit the right stick down and gotcha. it'll just chop 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 until it's all done broccoli uh chopping broccoli now you can also you can also run multiple stations at the same time so let's say you had french fries and the fish you know fish and chips mm. you could <laughs> have the deep fry station running which is another little uh, station in your kitchen. Have that turned on so that oil is heating up. Walk over to your um, to your uh, uh, burners and pull out your pan, put it on the burner, put the oil in there, get that heated up. Oh, you better go check your deep fryer. Make sure that it's hot enough. It's hot enough. Let's pop those French fries in there. Go back to your stove see if that's good enough start getting your fish on there oh you you got to go check your deep fryer make sure that your fries aren't burning now right and there you know uh there's progress bars and timers and all of these and for the most part you can see them all uh but you have to be out of the um the action view you know when when you're at the stove you're looking at the stove until you actually oh. click on it and then you're into the stove and now you can you know move things and turn the heat up and down and like flip and all that stuff. They're each, so, each device is like a window, like you're going into, into it to activate it and I mean, interact with it, but to see other things, you have to be outside. You got, yeah. You got to pull out. Otherwise you won't be able to You'll really see, any of it. see if like something's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Can you so, burn one thing I've always thought is funny with other cooking games. You can't like burn oil like you can put oil in a pan and get it ready. Right. Mm -hmm. But they never have that action of like, oh, you waited too long. This oil burnt. Um, I don't have an answer for you on that one. My guess would be yes. Hmm. So like if you let it sit there and the pan got too hot, uh, you know, it, it could burn because you can burn your food. That's that's definitely not yeah. uh, obvious. Um. And, you know, I even get into the actual how the recipes work. <laughs> so the recipes themselves, you, you kind of have to memorize them in how you go about doing them. So like the recipes are broken down into like multiple stages. And so like the cutting one stage, the frying's another stage for the fish, the, um, you know, putting it on the plate with the other veggies that you cut or the French fries uh, is another stage. So in your recipe book, you can actually look at the stages, 
And each stage will tell you whether or not there's a specific thing you can do in there to make it a better, like, to make it better. Like if you wanted to throw some salt or pepper in there. Oh, okay. To give it that extra star yeah. rating, or not star rating, but uh, It's like a bonus. Rating. Yeah. So you can do that. And to help remind you of like the ingredients you need to grab or, you know, the specific steps for the recipe, you can pin recipes to your main UI, your user interface. So that way you can walk over to the stove and you'll see in the top right corner, oh, right, I need to go grab the fish and I need flour, I need potatoes and all that. But it doesn't do it automatically. You have to manually pin that. You have to go manually pin that, correct? Mm. So after you're done um, putting all this together, you put it on a plate, you can serve it up right then and there, or you have the option to customize how you plate it. So you can go in there and you can take the plate. It'll have like this top-down view of the plate, and you can move the fish where you want it to be plated on there. You can take your french fries, you know, at first, there's only one way to put the French fries on there, but you can kind of move it around wherever you want on the plate. But you can eventually unlock different plating methods. So like maybe it's the French fries in a stack. Maybe it's the French fries mm. in a little ramekin. Maybe it's the French fries that are cut up into like little cubes or something. So, <laughs> you know, can, you have... Can I make Lego French fries? Yeah. <laughs> So you you get options later on that you can unlock to make your plating better. Uh, The plating itself, I didn't notice having any effect on the score. It's just for your own visual. Your own benefit. Yeah. But if you like a way that it plates, you can save that. So then from then on out, whenever you make that particular recipe and you go to serve it, it's going to be that. It's going to be, you don't have to go and do it again. Ah. It's going to come out as that design. It's almost like a create a character. <laughs> but kind for of. your dish. Cre- create, create a layout. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so in the end, the goal is to, you know, just be the best restaurant, earn money, uh, upgrade your equipment, get better stuff for your kitchen, better ingredients. You know, hmm. and, and that's the, the loop of the game. That is your you know, point A to point B. So it is a simulator through and through in that regard. And, you know, if you like that sort of thing, it's a, it's fun. I think I prefer it's enjoy the, the, I think I enjoy it more in that regard than say something like the food truck simulator with the way it does its preparation and everything. Right. It sounds Um, more enticing to me. Um, there, there that, is a story also, by the way, but oh. it's, you know, it's here or there. It's just some kind of filler to, to get you through <laughs> to everything. It's just enough to give you the justification to do it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, go read the review that I put up there. It's, it's a lot of fun if you like that stuff or if you just like cooking in general. It's just a nice little, a fun time. Uh, another thing I've been playing is Terra Nil. Now, this this one comes out on, actually, it'll be Tuesday when either this goes up or the day after. Uh, but embargo is Monday. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. <laughs> we'll be good. Uh, so I'll have a review up. And so Terra Nil, the best way I can describe it, it is reverse. Uh, Sim City. <laughs> now, you said that uh, before we started the the podcast, and you said reverse Sim City, and I was like in my head thinking, what is that? <laughs> I I don't I don't even know what you mean. The only thing I could think of was we have a city and we need to tear it down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but that's about it. <laughs> it's. It's kind of like that. Now, this would be if the city was already a wasteland. But Okay, so it's like already an apocalyptic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so like um, I'm still going through some of the uh, the stages in the game and everything. But the basic gist is you take this wasteland 
and you throw this equipment in there to basically terraform this area so that you can grow grass again. And then from the grass, you got to be able to refill rivers. And then from the rivers, you'll need to, uh, you know, replant forests and swampland and like, um, uh, like just landscape. And once you get all that done, then you need to reintroduce the animals. So you start reintroducing the animals in the areas and they have certain requirements. Like they need to be within certain like blocks, we'll say of like certain animals, you know, the predators need to be near their prey, but they also have conditions like, well, these guys like the swamp and these guys like the desert and things like that. Now, once you've done all that, you've had to, you know, build this equipment to be able to do these things. So you need a, a specific building to um, turn that bad soil into good soil that can, grass can grow. And to do that, you need power. And to do power, you're using windmills. And I was windmills, say wind of water. <laughs> wind. Was your wind. <laughs> and you can only, uh, at, early on at least, you can only build windmills on uh, rock. You can't put it on the actual grass. So it leaves you certain areas that you can start building. When you build a windmill, you get a, uh, a circle and basically with a diameter of how, where you can place things and they'll get power. Ah, yes. And then like. once you do that, then you place down the building and it's going to show you the area that it will be able to affect. So, like, if it's, you know, cleaning up the dirt to be grass, it's going like to show you the area that you it'll do that. The pylons in uh, StarCraft. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like the pylons for your energy. <laughs> um, it, that was, uh, I was also describing uh, to, to our, our, our good uh, editor-in-chief, Scott, that uh, my first thought was, like, yeah, it's like a city builder, but it's kind of like, you know, this reverse city builder, kind of like a, a a reverse RTS. You know, you're you're taking these building these buildings that you'll eventually have to just remove. <laughs> right. They're so they're essentially being built for temporary use. Yeah. 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 So you're building all this stuff and you actually have to get rid of it by the end of it because you want this to be uh back to nature and you want a self-sustaining so you're you're kickstarting a self-sustaining ecosystem yeah yeah so you're cleaning everything up and you're just making it nice and pretty again and when you get to that point then you got to use equipment or bring equipment in that's going to demolish and recycle the equipment that you just built and that'll go into building your drop ship that will basically fly you off to the next area now, there is a currency that you use to be able to build <laughs> these items. And the currency is, I forget what they call it, but it's like your green score. So the more, uh, like, the more you're doing to make things better, the higher your score goes up, and then you're able to do more. So by the end of it, you should have enough score to be able to demolish everything, build your ship, and leave. Uh, what if and, you don't? Uh, then you just keep building. You keep going. Okay. <laughs> keep going. Low level stuff, making it to the high level stuff to eventually just break it down and recycle. Gotcha. Uh, there are three different difficulty levels. There's a cozy mode, basically just nice and relaxed and chill. This, I, I feel Terranil in that state is very much one of those cozy games. You just sit back, you relax, you listen to the nice and calm music, and you just revitalize the land. Uh, there's also a standard like um, strategy mode. So I haven't played that one all too much. It's, you know, you have to worry about your money and you have to worry about where you're putting things. It's a strategy aspect. 
And I'm drawing a blank on the last one, but I believe the last one is challenge mode and, you know, basically the hardest one. But overall, I'm enjoying Terra Nil. And like I said, I'll have a review for that one up in sometime this week. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds pretty good. I, I heard I heard it. Oh, wow. Last year sometime. Uh, I guess it was the game show or the game. It was one of the awards. One shows, of the think, award shows. Uh, yeah. A trailer popped up for it. Yeah. And I was like, hmm, that's an that's an interesting um concept. <laughs> um just just in general to be like, you know, hey, we're we're reversing, we're undoing, you know, the standard um uh, destroying the land to make mm-hmm. make it habitable for humans. Um I'll have to check that out. Yeah. So uh, so Chef Life too also. I I think Genevieve might like that. Yeah. The the restaurant simulator, like I said. That one, you know, you get that nice calm before you kind of learn the ropes a little bit. And then, yeah. you know, you get into the cooking part and it's it's a fun time. Uh, the only other thing, <laughs> the only other thing I've been playing is uh, Destiny 2. <laughs> Destiny 2. Uh, that has consumed our lives. It, You know, uh, the last time we were here, we were back into Destiny and going through the uh, Beyond Light and Witch Queen campaigns and everything. So in between that time, Lightfall <laughs> has come out. And I'll have a review for Lightfall as well. Uh, I will say that I I am enjoying what they've put together. As a package as a whole, Lightfall is good. The story is... You know, hit or miss. I think it does some good things, but it also it it also assumes a lot. I and was just gonna say that it it misses the misses that it has is the assumptions that it yeah. takes. It's like I feel there's either a chapter missing sort of thing, or they're pre planning for this stuff to be revealed later on as a oh. See, that's that you you should have just waited and you would have found out. Right. So there's that. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I guess the big question, if if you have played Destiny 2's Lightfall expansion, there's a whole thing called The Veil. And that in itself is partly why there's people uh, out there online just saying that the they the story isn't doing it for them it's because of that and there's some other things along the lines of like unanswered questions and things and like we were saying you know there's some assumptions that the game thinks you either know or are going to know later that they don't telegraph and so the story in itself is it's not their strongest suit. No. <laughs> but Neomuna is a world, uh, you know, an area you can go to. I think it's a, a nice little, like, futuristic uh, 80s retro future city. Uh, I've, really neat. I've, uh, not, I don't know about the Cloud Strider stuff. Yeah. But it, it's fine. Um, it's It does the job. I, I think that this DLC felt to me it felt more like we're they're putting more gameplay sure. in than they are story um they were they're doing the gameplay more justice or better justice uh than than they than putting more story in it's then trying to change things up a little bit so people weren't don't get so bored um as quick i, yeah. I feel that that's what's what this dlc's intent was and you you can you can feel that a lot in the new um ability uh the new power set that they have in there the strand now, I know you don't you're not a big fan of it you yeah. like your solar yes uh, but i I really like the strand so like I also enjoyed the stasis and the stasis was very much the uh from a distance type of um power set where you're throwing things out there, freezing people in place, or you're throwing out a little ice tornado, and that thing is keeping people away from you. So that is more of the 
uh, you know, the, the distance. Attempts. The crap. It felt very much like both Strand and Stasis to me feel like crap. Ma- uh, crowd, crowd control, control. or ma- yes. maintenance. Exactly. Not necessarily. I'm going to do big damage. I'm going to do, ma- you know, crowd control, and then come back to the ones that I know I need to take care of first. Right. Sure. So, like the Strand, that one is all about like your area of attack because your super is well for hunter at least uh your super is the kind of like a kunai on a rope i'm forgetting what they call that now but you're just swinging that thing around as if we're you know this big old uh rope (laughs) (laughs) and you're doing a big area of you know area of effect on everybody around you and then your your abilities are like you can throw out uh, little threadling guys, which will go out there and like nibble on the enemies or something. <laughs> uh, you've got a, a a grappling hook that you can use to, you know, either have you traverse faster or bring you into people closer. And the other one that they give you the option for is this little grenade that will just like kind of string people up so that they're stuck in place marionettes so, yeah kind of, sure <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a little bit of like this crowd control keeping people away just you know it it works with my play style both that and stasis and i i, I enjoy both of them and with the the new uh strand the grappling hook and everything it'll open up some traversal options that destiny hasn't had before. So there's a lot be, more verticality yeah. that the strand allows. Not that you can't do it currently. It just make, it does make it significantly easier. Yeah. So that'll be neat to see. Uh, but other than that, it's just been fun to get back into that destiny grind of getting on there, doing the bounties you know, going through and upgrading exotics with like the catalysts and everything, uh, doing the seasonal stuff every week, the one seasonal thing, which this week was a big, big see, <laughs> like, like a lot of stuff happened or <laughs> one big thing happens, I guess. But, um, yeah, it, it, it makes me interested in where they're going. And I feel like, this particular season is so far has uh, been pretty good on the story front. Whereas Lightfall was a little weak. The first season is a little stronger. So it kind of balances out, I guess. Yeah. I I think, I think the problem destiny two has with the community is that it's, it's become very um, one way or the other. There's a lot of people that play the game specifically just to play the game with no care about the story. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of people that play the game that only care about the story. And they've been very invested. Uh, Bungie has been very invested in the story and and outputting that uh, for a while. That when they've kind of let up a little bit on the intricacies of the story and put more focus into gameplay, they have kind of earned the ire of of those uh, lore people. Um, but I don't think that it's that that the Bungie has gone away from it. I just think that, like we said earlier, there's assumptions being made, um, or even in in world. There are, this will be told to you in time. Mm-hmm. Right now, your int- the intent is you're not supposed to know as the Guardian what this means yet. Right. Uh, but Because you haven't of, hit. They, like I mentioned earlier, like there's no hit. telegraphing of it. Yeah, they like could have telegraphed it. If there, it's one thing to be like, well, I don't know what, the, what this is, but... There are other things going on in the story to let you know that, yeah, you're not supposed to know what this is yet. Right. Whereas in what they have currently written, it feels like everybody else knows 
except you, the player. <laughs> you're not in. You're not in on the on the joke, <laughs> right? Your character knows, but you, the player, have no idea. Have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the for me the story in the main story of uh, Lightfall that really like took me out of it was just how telegraphed uh, the the I guess the turning point or the twist was, right? Um, at that end, at the at the end, with everything, um, it seemed too obvious <laughs> from the beginning of like what was going to happen, uh, which I think a lot of people had had issue with, um, just because it was seeing what was going to happen. So that's why I think that's why a lot of people that like the the lore were like, "Hey, this is not a bungee twist. This is not a bungee." Um, uh, writers putting effort into it. This is them just chalking up you know, a, a a story that has been played out multiple times over. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's what it was. They, just, they, they, didn't, they felt maybe shafted from not having a intricate story, which I mean, how long has destiny been out? Almost 10 years, <laughs> almost 10 years. It, it It's going to have, it's going to have dips. <laughs> you know, these writers cannot, cannot um, sustain everyone's thirst for, 10 years and not get backlash I mean, mm -hmm. it's just it's gonna happen and they've proven that they know what they're doing and they've proven that they can take and make something good out of it yeah so that that's pretty much what i've been playing <laughs> that's it <laughs> well we're on to my list now granted my list is long, longer but it's not like i don't have a whole lot mm -hmm. to say about all of them i mean First thing on the list here is is played up. I've still been playing played up. Me and Des love the thing. Um, they've gotten you know they put some new updates into it um, and mods. Des has found the the joy of works the Steam Workshop mods, <laughs> which there's <laughs> so, a lot. There's a lot. Um, she has twenty five installed, I think, right now. Um, I mean. The biggest thing that I wanted when Played Up came up, that the the hearing about the workshop was going to happen was just adding different dishes. Yeah, new that dishes. Was, oh yeah, that's what I was all about. Like we've got tacos now, we've got drinks, sodas, root beer, you know, or I mean, uh, floats, uh, cake. Uh, I just want more kind of costumes. <laughs> I would like some more costumes too. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's that. We've been playing that, and it's just you know. It's one of those that is definitely one of those games that it really won't get old um, just by the nature of how the game's played. Uh, I've also been playing Destiny 2, obviously, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I won't really go too big into that. But, you know, Destiny 2, uh, the new subclass sucks. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's wrong, but go ahead. I mean, however wrong you want to be is OK. You know, just, you know, put your put your money into the wrong thing, but it's OK. Uh, also been play, played a little bit of Goose Goose Duck. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Goose. <laughs> Basically Among Us with Ducks or Geese. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is very little. Now, granted, it's Among Us with Geese, ducks. but it does, I mean, uh, with uh, uh, Ducks, uh, but it does have different gameplay. So, like, it's not just Among Us. Um, there's other aspects to it, like you play the classic, which is Among Us. You can also play, but you can also play like a um, a timed murder kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, murder kind of thing where like you know uh, everyone's doing their their um, tasks, but that's just to speed up the time, so that way the murder has murderer has less time to kill everyone. Um, and I think there's like three or four other modes that we haven't played yet that. Um, like it, it, you know, it, in the game, it also adds in jobs, uh, not jobs. What are they called? Um, like types, you know, like jester and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Um, where you know you're not j or arsonist, you're not just the murderer. You also are now trying. You know, you can only set people on fire or stuff like that. And and Among Us has um, there's Among Us mods that have that, but this is built into the game. So, um, and then you can fart. So you know that's always fun. Yeah. You, you communicate or emote. it's basically emote exactly it's it's a little fart cloud out your butt that has a little emote in the cloud so um you know goofy stuff like that 
Oh, yeah. so that's that's not bad. But that's also again, that's that's one of those games that you got to have like six or seven people to play or so it's really not all that fun. Yeah, um, you, you need a group. Yeah, because if you got like like four people, it's like, oh, OK, you, you're done in a few minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, also started playing stone block three. So that's, if you haven't, uh, listened to the early, uh, podcast, uh, episodes of, of this, uh, podcast, uh, we were big into stone block and mm-hmm. they've now, uh, feed the beast, uh, put out a stone block three. So that's basically more of the same thing, but just with different, uh, mods. Um, and the one thing I'm trying to wrap my head around is the create mod which that one is apparently a very dis dividing the divisive mod because it it is the way for you to get the majority of energy and all your materials um but the problem is that it's all about gears like very literally making gears that move to produce some motion Mm -hmm. uh, instead of just Get, instead of creating a machine that does it in a single block. So, you know, you'll have these like multi blocked devices that, you know, like one of them has one, the one that I have is a milling machine, right? And you literally, you just, it's a milling machine. You put stuff into it and it grinds it or mills it and it out comes like, you know, coal or something. But it's not a single block. The milling receptacle is a block. But then you need a conveyor to take what comes out of the mill into a uh, chest. So it's actually three blocks. But to make the mill spin, you need a gear, a horizontal gear, and then you need a vertical gear connected to another horizontal gear that's being pushed by water because it's a water mill. So like this thing that would have been like a single block in many other minecraft mods is six seven eight blocks and uh and you're powering it by motion so i can see where people would get upset with that and i i can say honestly when i first saw that i was upset with it because it's too much work um it just it just takes more time to learn it uh it sound you know looking at it you know, it just looks and sounds very complicated. Yeah. When all I want is just more chickens and cows to to make. See, that's what I want. I want. I need. <laughs> I'm and I keep telling myself I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go into modding Minecraft and just add more chickens and more cows and do like sheep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> resources. One of, you know, do each of the animals. Like, okay, well, here you need to go and collect. All the chickens, you know, all the different uh, mineral type chickens. Right. And here's the same thing, but with cows and the same thing, but with sheep and pig. Just give me that mod. I don't care about everything else. Just give me that mod. <laughs> right. Well, like, that's the thing is that like, you could do like chickens that do like the minerals and the like the hard, the, the, the irons and stuff like that. Right. The metals. And then you could do the cows that do like the liquid stuff, anything that can do molten. Um, and then you can do sheep that'll that can do like, you know, foods or um, grains or stuff like that. Like there's 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 a game there, right? There's a mod in there. It's just I need to learn how to mod, make my own mods <laughs> in Minecraft. I haven't done that yet. Um, but that, yeah, that's stone block three. It's more of stone block, but different mods. Uh, Fun, but honestly, I can say it's not nearly as fun as one or two, one and two, um, because it's not as easy to get energy, uh, or power energy. in it. Energy, power, overwhelming. Um, other than that, I've been playing. I also played Stellaris for four hours, approximately. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and for I, I for four hours. Uh, after four hours, I realized this was not a game for me <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, because it is very much a space calculator game. <laughs> it's it's all about in, in like politics and diplomats. It's it's like a sieve. But in space. 
And um, it was too confusing for me. It, it, it was too much work for me. I knew where it wanted to go and I could see where it could be fun for some people. But it very much threw me into, oh, it's spreadsheets. Yeah. That. <laughs> um, I, I like the fact that you can like, you know, you, are, you had like a Mass Effect map, like a uh, space map. Galaxy where you map. can f- A galaxy map. That's what I was looking for. Uh, a galaxy map where you can like fly your ship you know, around and then you can also, you know, build Corsairs and stuff like that. And there's fights in it. I never got to that point because it just <laughs> it's all about mining resources, which I don't mind that much until it becomes um, spreadsheety where it's it's just all about how much how much of a resource you have or what do you, what can you what do you have? What can you trade to something else, another area? to get what you don't have. I, it, I don't like that. It's too much. <laughs> so I gave it four hours and that's, the, I mean, I think maybe four hours. It might've been less than that. Um, and that's as much as that's going to get because <laughs> it is already uninstalled and uh, off my computer. Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> goodbye. Um, I've also been played uh, Electrician Simulator. Uh, that is because I watched her video. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I did like that game. Let me get back into that. And I got back into it and I do like it. It's fun. It's that it's that simulator game of like I can put on a podcast and just put stuff together. Did, are um, you continuing our uh, what's our, Amperin? What's Amperin? Yeah, I, f- I forgot. That's what we called it until I saw the video. And then I'm like, oh, what? that's on my computer. And I made sure and I continued and it. We are. I am. I am. What's Amperin? Watts, Watts, Amperin, Watts, Amperin, <laughs> still funny. It's still good. <laughs> um, but if you haven't, if you don't know what Electrician Simulator is, take a look at the video. Um, yeah, give it a watch. Yeah, give it a watch. It's fun. If you have any kind of like remote uh, inkling of like uh, electrician elec- electricity, like that's kind of interesting to you. If you like electricians, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't. If, if you like European electricians, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, it's not bad. It's it's pretty fun. Um, if that's what, if that's the kind of game you're going for, if yeah. you, it it's kind of like power wash, a pressure washer simulator, or power wash simulator, or power washer. Um, it's only fun if you find that kind of thing fun. It's very hard to be like. It's not going to turn. You know. Yeah. It's not going to sway a new person. Right. If it's someone that's not really into that type of mechanic or that type of thing, it's not you're not going to be like, oh, I like it despite the fact like that's mm-hmm. not going to happen. Um, also played Hogwarts Legacy, ah, um, yes. which is witchy. wizards. I'm, I'm going to preface this with I hate the Harry Potter series. I don't like the books. I don't like the movies. Um, the game. Not that bad. It's it's a very I find the game's mechanics and stuff very good, um, smooth. It does the job that it intends to do. Like mm-hmm. it seems this, it does what it intends to set out to do. Um, I did stop playing it mainly because I just I could not get into the story because I just don't like Harry Potter. Um, but Genevieve, she's been playing a lot of it. She does like it. Oh, um, good. She hasn't played in a little bit, but she's been dance has a lot of dance stuff. And right. But she does. She has she has stolen my um, PS5 a few times <laughs> to play Hogwarts Legacy. Um, yeah. But, you know, between uh, dance and school and creating her Destiny 2 character, there's just yeah. not a lot of time. Yeah. 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 Her Destiny 2 character that she swears she's not going to create. But, you know, we both know that's <laughs> Um <laughs> yeah. uh she's actually a hufflepuff a hufflepuff, a hufflepuff. and that 100 percent fits that child <laughs> um i was what was i ravenclaw ravenclaw uh, ravenclaw yeah the, the bird blue birds <laughs> the blue bird yeah i'm up in the tower apparently um, and it's actually watching her play. See, she's actually played a lot more than I have. Uh, so she's gotten much farther than I have. 
uh, watching her play, it does, it's, it's simple, but becomes, can be more intricate if, if you let it. Um, and some things at, you do require more intricacy, but um, it's, I think it's a pretty good balance. I think it's a very good game. All right. Well, I mean, uh, it is also made by the um, uh, what, Avalanche. No, um, not Avalanche. I don't think it was Avalanche. Sh- uh, shoot, who were the people who did the um, Shadow of Mordor games? Was, was it the same? Isn't it them? You know, I'm gonna. You keep talking. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go Google this real quick. Oh, I'm actually. <laughs> well, you you continue with whatever. I, I see you have one more left. Yes, I have one more left. Um, okay, so I'm going to start out in this preface again. Another preface with this. I love the Dynasty Warrior series. Okay. Uh huh. I love the fantasy slash fiction and slash nonfiction that that series is all about. Um, I I I like that world enough that i bought the three kingdoms books the right. three the, the volume books and read them all the way through like i i i just love that lore right so when i heard of wo long fallen dynasty it piqued my interest because i was like oh this looks like a kind of like a fallen uh three kingdoms era game and then when i looked into it and realized it takes place in that era I'm thinking, wow, okay, another another um person or manufacturer or not developer taking this era and making something different out of it. So it's not so campy and it's more real um real but not realistic, right? Okay. Uh, a, a more serious tone, right? And I'm like, I would love to see what another developer what their take on it is, right? So I downloaded it and I played. Oh shoot, I don't even know how much I played. I guess I could probably look it up specifically because uh, I got it from eh, um, Game guess, Pass. Guess to me. <laughs> guess to me. Uh, but I played, in my opinion, a, enough. A good amount. A good amount to detail that I don't like it. And actually, right. I don't just don't like it. I vehemently hate it. <laughs> Is it is it the combat? It is one hundred percent the combat. Um, isn't I it, want. Isn't hmm? isn't it Dark Souls esque? Yes, it is a Souls like game. Okay, that's what I figured. It was just Souls like, but in the Three Kingdoms era. Yes, and I was I was giving it a try because I know I don't like Souls like games, but I'm like you know, maybe the the um it's three kingdoms lore will keep me in it and it did for a while until i came to the first boss of zhang liang and i was to the point where i was going to throw my controller at the computer sounds like because difficult. it was needlessly difficult for no reason mhm mhm and insanely cheap mhm mhm because of all of the like you know it's not about fighting it's about timed blocking and dodging and oh by the way you hit the attack button and it showed that it hit the ball hit me but i decided that i'm not going to get and take any damage from it so i uh i, I hate it it's <laughs> garbage and yeah. well you know the, those souls games are all about animation priority uh they're about you know, having the right loadout. They're about timing. And it's about memorizing uh, attack patterns. That is souls in a nutshell. And that sounds like what you're dealing with in Wulong. <laughs> yeah. And um, again, I hate it. It's stupid. Don't like those kind of games. And from now on, I know I'll just never... Even if it's souls like anything like that, I know that no matter what the uh, subject is, I'm going to dislike it. Did you play uh, the Star Wars one? Star Wars one. 
what was uh, that? with Cal Kestis. Yeah, I'm forgetting the name of that. The new one is Fallen Order, but or is that? Wait, isn't that the old one? The, the one with Cal Kestis I did play, and I actually liked, but the bosses weren't bad. No, no, I think that one is a good stepping stone for a Souls like experience because it gives you a lot of the same uh, Souls rules. Where it's a little bit of that animation priority. It is very much a defeat everybody. It'll stay defeated until you go and rest sort of thing. And it resets. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, See, you know. none of that is my issue. Like, the if you remove the boss out of my play, mm-hmm. everything else I loved. I was all, I did, I liked it. I didn't mind the repeating, you know the enemies coming back after the campfire or the, the flag that you place down. Okay. Um, it, it's basically the same, you know, the same thing. It's, but I didn't mind any of that stuff. The story was doing look feeling very good too, but the, if I have to be uh, play a boss and if I die more than five times at a boss, mm-hmm. it's not, it's no longer fun for me <laughs> and beating the boss doesn't make me feel any better it just makes me feel like i wasted that many minutes to hours on nothing but a video game on nothing but digital one zeros and ones like it didn't give me any benefit any promise any progress so it's not fun to me right um i will say the when i played the first dark soul there was about i don't know maybe if if you were to break it up into fourths it may be two fourths of the way through or maybe two and a half fourths of the way through uh <laughs> there was this one boss encounter that all i did was put in my um uh, i i think they were called soapstones i'm drawing a blank now basically you you're putting out a a feeler for other people to be like, hey, I can help you. <laughs> hmm. So I sat there and just kept helping people with this one boss and leveling my character up. And after I did that, the rest of the game became way more enjoyable to me because I was over leveled for a lot of it. So I was able to, you know, take hits i was able to attack and feel like i was doing damage and i don't know if i would have had the same enjoyment of a souls game if my experience was not that yes yeah, so i'm sure if i spent enough out a days doing this i may get to a point while i was over leveled and to mm-hmm. the point where it would be fun um, but the way that Wolong, first, the first thing I got to say about Wolong's fighting and stuff, there's so many bars and like mechanics in it that are just not necessary, but they're there to make it more convoluted. Um, but like you've got, you've got vitality, I think is what it's called for uh, five different vitalities, earth, wind, or earth, water, fire, something, Heart. something. <laughs> go planet it uh basically <laughs> basically that's what it is <laughs> um it's those earth the, 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 that element kind of thing and you can upgrade those and those will give you those upgrades are specific paths so like you know one is equal to basically strength one's equal to stealth one's equal to you know melee that kind of thing right mm-hmm. so you upgrade those individual paths um from what i was reading online there is a maximum level to those paths. But what made me a little irritated uh, was that it's not a maximum level for each path. It's just a maximum overall level. So at 150, you're maxed out, right? But that's that's 150 total of the five groups. So at max, if you went equal on all of them, you could do 30, right? Yeah. You could do 30 level on each one you can go higher on those levels but that would basically mean you'd have to respec your thing to put more into one or the other right 
which pisses me off to no end. I hate that type of thing. <laughs> I'm playing a game to be a superhero. Let me overpower. Um, <laughs> then you have, uh, and this still kind of eluded me just because it's, again, more mechanics that are more confusing, but you've got your basic attacks, which are square, and then you've got like a spirit attack, I think it's called, which is triangle, which is a stronger attack, but it takes up a little bit of like your spirit energy. And then you've got, uh, you hold R1, and you can do a um, martial arts attack, which is a stronger attack, more precision, so you could miss very easily, but it is stronger. It does take a little longer, and that also takes up some of like your spirit energy, right? Then you can have a wizardly attack, which is magic. Uh, and that also a takes... A wizardly attack. It's called wizardly. You call um, in you call in an owl and here comes Harry. <laughs> speaking, <it> remind- <laughs> of, speaking of, uh it is Avalanche software. It is the it was Avalanche, Avalanche Okay. It is the Avalanche people actually is it software? E- e- either way. Uh it is the Avalanche team that made Disney Infinity. Okay. So that makes sense. Um it is not the just cause. Not Avalanche to just call team. them. It's wrong, yeah. Um so there you go. Uh, but the the wizardly it reminded me of a very a much more in depth skill tree of um the witcher's uh sigils or Ard you know the Ard and Igni and all that um which for the life of me I can't remember what it's what they're called but uh the basic magics that he that the witchers can do it's like that but it's not basic like it's it's more in in depth they, they, they do much more um much stronger spells there's like lightning and fire and stuff like that which i obviously didn't get very far because i didn't get uh get a whole lot of points to put into that um and that's good those are fine for like the base enemies but when mm-hmm. it comes to the boss it they don't do squat <laughs> <laughs> they they take too long to do and again, like I said, because the boss decides when it wants to take damage and when it doesn't, <laughs> it's kind of irrelevant. <laughs> so, well, long Fallen Dynasty is for someone out there, just not me. Yeah. And it has been also um, uninstalled from my computer to never again go on to my hard drive. Goodbye. <laughs> Good riddance. Which sucks because I was really into the story. I really was looking forward to seeing where what they showed the story as because they it wasn't just like this the start of the yellow turban rebellion and you have Zheng Zhao, Zheng Liang, oh and shoot his other brother. I can't remember the other brother's name, Zheng Zheng Bao. I think it's Zheng Bao. Um sure. Those I believe it's Zheng Bao. But those three are like like the 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 bosses of the area and they're trying to overthrow the Han, but it's not like in Dynasty Warriors where it's like, you know, they're just you know, raising people, a militia to, to overthrow the Han. They've actually gathered a thing called the Elixir and is giving it to these people, which are making them a- almost like undead, but, dev- you know, entirely devoted and have slightly more powerful, the more powerful, but they're dumb. <laughs> OK, like that kind of like zombie esque feel. Um if you get too much elixir in you. So like there's this like more magical, whimsical world put in on top of like the Dynasty Warriors feel. Or I mean Dynasty Warriors um story. But it's taken seriously. So I was excited about that. But I guess I'll just I'll just watch the videos on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah might as well at this point yeah. at this point yeah but in the long run like i said i really really wanted to like well long fallen dynasty i just it's not the it's not the game for me <laughs> <laughs> um but we've run a little long and we've rightfully so we've uh we've had a lot to talk about because uh had a lot of games and a pretty big uh, gap. Uh, but I did want to say before we kind of end the show, I did want to uh, point out 
and uh, show some respect for Destiny 2's voice actors of Zav- for Zavala, uh, Lance Reddick. Yeah. A uh, a great man, honestly. Uh, Ed, you were showing me some of the videos and some of the stuff that he did for the Destiny community. Oh yeah. And it's just it's it's great to it was great to see that kind of um, interaction um, with a person who also played the game. He really did play the game a lot and enjoyed um, enjoyed his time with it. Yeah, I think um, some of the accounts that I saw was that he put in like 14,000 hours or something crazy like that. Well, and I heard some, I think on one of the podcast, I want to say it was Next Lander, but um, I heard them say something about that they believe they heard that he set up like a studio, a voice, a voiceover studio in his closet or in his, in one of his rooms just for Destiny. So if they needed some, you know, some pickup lines or some voice lines that they he could do it real quick and get it to them. Sure. Um, and but he was he he invested time into it in in a good way. <laughs> and all that's just you know his hobby because right. he's a professionally trained actor in big movies. He's in the upcoming John Wick Four. He you yes. know he he was a main character in that uh, franchise. He did a bunch of TV shows. He's been on. Yeah, he was in like the Shield, right? I think was um, it Shield. It starts with an S, but I don't think I it think was it the was Shield. shield. It know. was one of those cop procedurals. <laughs> yes, yes. And he um, was a very good actor. Very good. Um, um, I don't think he really got his dues. Um, early he enough. was getting there. Like, he, yeah, you know, he he was starting to pick up bigger roles, and like John Wick was like his most recent big role. It's just very sad that, you know, at 60 years, way too young. Yeah. To, um, uh, to have, to have, uh, I guess, natural causes. <laughs> that's, yeah, and that's what, that's what um, I've been reading is natural cars, causes and, you know, respect and, and um, love goes out to his family. He was, he was a, from all, all uh, accounts, a very good, good man, a good actor. Uh, and, <clears throat> seemed to generally like what he was doing liked what he's now, doing liked his fans yeah you know. now i i don't know him personally i didn't know him personally obviously but there was not you didn't have like a, a um by all accounts, thing <laughs> yeah well i mean by all accounts from like all the different articles and different videos that have been put out it just seems like he was a very genuine uh person yes and he, he will definitely be missed um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the proper way for Destiny and Zavala goes, but um, yeah, Destiny and uh, Horizon and Horizon, right? Because he was a uh, uh, silent silence, yeah, silence. Silas. And Horizon, uh, probably a little harder considering it was his likeness. He was um, the face uh, facial capture. Right, it. he was. He, it was not just his voice; it was his his likeness. Like, yeah, yeah. it was him. So, um, going to be missed. And he had that distinct voice. It was, was so cool. It was uh, one of those that I, uh, who was I can't remember who I was explaining it to, but you, when you hear his voice, you you instantly go, "I've heard that somewhere." Right? Yes. It's yes, like, he was, I know that voice. And, and real quick though. So we, me and Des listened to the Batman Unburied. Um, oh, I'm sure he played someone in there. <laughs> he was, he was, I believe, Bruce Wayne's father. And uh-huh. we were listening and I heard it, the first talk and I was like, man, I know that voice. And then I turned to Des and I'm like, I think that's Zavala. <laughs> she went, who? <laughs> I mean, she doesn't right. play Destiny, so. But I'm like, yet. I think that's, I think that's Zavala yet. <laughs> like, I think that's Zavala. And I looked at him like, you darn right. Darn tootin' it is. And it, it, it made it, he made it so much better. He really did. Not that it was bad, but um, him being in there was, it was really cool. I yeah. Um, but thank you all for joining us today. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the .exe podcast. Did you enjoy today's discussion? Yeah, gotta let us know. Save, send us your comments, questions, topics, and corrections to 
dot exe at savingcontent.com or you can leave a comment at saving content on twitter and facebook we're also on mastodon so oh. you can go to saving content at i think it's mastodon social i'd have to double check but uh you can go to any of our socials i think and uh find the link to go there too or even but- our youtube i think it's on our youtube either way huh. we're on mastodon so if you don't like what's happening on Twitter and if you don't like the Zuck, uh, you have <laughs> another option. <laughs> yes, that's, hey, more options is always better, right? <laughs> right. Uh, saving content is also on YouTube. Uh, so subscribe for preview, video previews, reviews, trailers, and original content like this podcast. Are you looking for more gaming discussions? Well, check out Saving Content's Quick Save podcast with Evan and Scott. Uh, they haven't made one in a little while, but I'm sure they will get back to it. They'll Listen, eventually get back to it. Yeah. Evan's got new kids, the little little kids. I'm telling you right now, if you've if you've not had kids, it takes a lot out of you. When they're younger, you, you know, they just they need help. They can't wipe themselves. It's a thing. It, <laughs> it is takes time. a thing. Uh remember to also visit savingcontent.com for the latest news and reviews. Uh Ed, how much what, what do we got? Because I know we I have been, a lot. My phone has been blowing up with stuff. I, it's so much stuff I can I couldn't I haven't been able to read it all. I can't hold all these reviews. I can't hold them all. It's the meme with the guy with all the lemons. Right? <laughs> um <laughs> or is it limes? I don't remember. Um I think but yeah, there's there's so much. Just go to savingcontent.com and you'll you'll catch up on everything. We've got we've had a bunch of uh videos go up. Yep. You know, Scott's put a couple up, we've put a couple up. Oh, uh, there's been a bunch of reviews. There's been a few previews. So, you know, get out there and uh, catch up on our stuff. Oh, yeah. I don't feel like naming them all because there's a lot. There's a and lot. We'd and we'd be here for another hour. It's not just games. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know that, but it's not just games that, you know, we do reviews on. There's you know, devices and, um, you know, like I said, quick looks and previews and stuff like that. But it's also things like, you know, headsets and, and mics and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. So tech. Uh, so take a look yeah or follow follow me on like my socials and watch me eat food you know <laughs> yeah well, you did the um oh shoot what was that that uh the um a la carte at mcdonald's yes <laughs> surprisingly i guess not surprisingly uh that thing i i guess you could say it's gone like mini viral so like <laughs> it, it's gotten a lot of views and on TikTok, the the McDonald's former McDonald's head chef, who goes on just you know, you know different uh, videos that have like McDonald's whatever on it. Yeah, uh, he duetted that, so that was fun to see. Oh, that's cool. Well, you, he, I mean, you've you've got you got some funny stuff on there. I think they're funny. <laughs> well, the way I always figure it, if it makes me laugh, it's funny. Yeah, and that's it's all about just enjoying <laughs> having fun with it. And that's that's it. You know, who cares if it gets one to two views? I don't. I had fun making it. And there you go. It's it's online to be watched at any time. Right. It's there forever now. Well, more or less forever. More or less. Uh but before we go, we ask one tiny favor. Like we always ask, please, a simple five star review. Uh you could do it right in your podcast app. Uh, don't forget to tell your friends about us here at .exe. It'll help us grow, and we really appreciate it. Thank you for listening, and remember, the most wasted of days is one without laughter. Good, Good night. <laughs>